What's up guys, welcome back to Code Wizard. Today we're gonna to be going over how to set up Visual Studio Code for web development. Note that this video is intended for beginners as a starting point to hit the ground running uh, with the perfect configuration of VS Code. So there are many code editors that you can choose from such as Atom, Eclipse, Sublime Text, and Notepad++, and many others. Uh, but the most popular one by far is VS Code, which is short for Visual Studio Code. Now, this is a free code editor with tons of support, amazing features, and companies across the world use this as their primary code editor. So I highly, highly recommend it. So for the first thing we'll go over is how to quickly install VS Code. Uh, first thing is to go to code.visualstudio.com. And when you get to this page here, uh, you'll see the download button. And inside that download button, it should have your operating system. Now, note that I am running this on a Mac. So that's why it says download Mac Universal. Uh, if you're running on a Windows or a Linux, it should say your operating system here. So go ahead and click on download. And then from there, it will go through the install process, which is just like the install process in any other application. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go over it because it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but once you have it installed, then you'll get to this page here, which is the entry point for VS Code. And this is called the welcome screen. And on the welcome screen, you can do a couple of things such as create a new file, open a folder, open a recent project, or go through uh, some of the help links to get you to the VS Code documentation. Um, but we're going to go over a quick tour of VS Code. So in the left-hand side here, you have the sidebar. And in the sidebar, there are a couple tools that we're going to go over. So the first one here at the top left corner is called the Explorer. So when you click on the Explorer, you can see this here. Now, I don't, I don't currently have a uh, workspace or a folder opened. So that's why it says open folder here. But basically, the Explorer allows you to create new files, open files, uh, as well as rename files and folders. Um, so you'll definitely be using the Explorer uh, throughout uh, your development. Then we have the search tool here, which allows you to search for a specific file folder or content in those files uh, for anything that you want, but it will search for key keywords. So in other words, if you type in, um, you know, header, it will search for specific uh, files that will have that keyword header inside of it. All right, so it will definitely be a helpful tool when it comes to searching multiple files and, and folders for a specific thing that you're looking for. The next thing we have here is called source control, which allows you to use Git in VS Code. Now, Git is going to be uh, something that you'll probably end up using once you have a little bit of coding experience. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, so we're not going to go over it, but I will make a, an additional video in the future going over how to use Git uh, in VS Code. The next tool we have is called the debugger. Also, as a beginner, you probably won't use the debugger in VS Code very often until you get some coding experience. Uh, but it's basically a tool that helps you solve problems in your code, whether those problems are errors or problems such as, you know, it's not producing the correct output. So the debugger can be helpful in those situations. Then from here, we have extensions. Now, extensions is something that we're going to go over in another minute, but all they really are are small pieces of software or apps that you can install in VS Code to give you additional functionality. Moving on down the sidebar here, we have accounts. If you want to associate a specific account with uh, VS Code, and then we have the gear icon, which is to manage your settings. So if you click on the gear icon, you can see there are a couple uh, different links here. We have the command palette settings, online services settings, extensions, keyboard short shortcuts, etc. So in this video, the first thing we want to go over is the command palette. So if you click on command palette, this allows you to search for anything you want inside of VS Code. So for example, if I type in keyboard shortcuts and press enter, we get to this page here, which is basically a long list of the keyboard shortcuts. And you can actually change uh, the commands in order to perform the shortcut here, which is kind of cool. So the command palette can be very helpful when it comes to searching for a specific feature or tool inside of VS Code. And like I said, you can search for literally uh, anything. 
Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over a couple settings that I want you to adjust to make your life a lot easier when it comes to web development. So to go to the settings, just go over to this gear icon here, click on it, and then click on settings. And then from there, it will bring up the settings for VS Code. Now, there are a couple settings we're going to edit. There, by the way, are a lot of settings, but you know, to keep this video short and sweet, we're just going to go over some of the primary settings I find that you know, if you don't have them changed, it's makes your life a lot more difficult. So first setting is the font size. Uh, VS Code, when you install it, usually has a small font size by default. Make sure that this says 16 and up. I find that any uh, font size less than 16, especially if you're on a big monitor, it can be too small and annoying to read. So make sure that it says 16 or above. And again, you can kind of play around with this number to figure out what font size is best for you. Then from there, we have tab size. I prefer two as a tab size. You will see that most people will either use two or four. I find that if you use four, uh, what happens is when you have a lot of nested code, eventually it will go off the right side of the screen uh, way too easily. So I recommend that you just choose two. So the next thing in the settings on the search bar here at the top where it says search settings, type in word wrap, and press enter. Um, word wrap basically controls how lines should wrap and make sure that it is on. So when you get to, um, you know, when you're writing code, then you have a really long line of code. It won't go off the right side of the screen. It'll actually wrap to the next line. So the next thing we want to go over is themes. So to get to themes, the easy way is just to click on the icon and then click on the command palette again. And we're going to type in theme. And where it says preferences color theme, go ahead and click on that. And from there, you can see a, a list of different themes for VS Code. Now, we have light themes and dark themes and then high contrast themes. So all themes are is it just changes the look of VS Code. So right now, you can see I have dark plus default dark installed. Uh, themes change the color of the background, color of the text, and most people prefer like a dark theme, like the dark Visual Studio theme or the dark plus theme, but feel free to choose whatever theme that you find that you like the best. And again, as you gain coding experience, it might change. Um, but again, some of these themes are kind of unusable. For example, if I, you know, and it, again, to each their own, but if I click on um, solarized light, uh, I just find this to be actually painful <laughs> to use. So that is why I recommend like a dark theme. So again, command palette, type in theme, preferences, color theme, and then click on the one you want. There we go. So this is the, the dark plus theme, which comes with Visual Studio Code. All right, so pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to install additional themes, you can actually scroll down, click on install additional color themes here. And there are many, many themes that you can install. Again, feel free to uh, find the theme that fits you uh, the best. So now that we have the settings set up properly, we have the theme that we want installed. Now we're going to go over uh, VS Code extensions, which like I said earlier, they're basically small pieces of software or apps that give you additional functionality in VS Code. So I already have an extensions open here. It's this little uh, block icon there. And by the way, I'm actually going to close out some of these tabs. And in the extensions, when you have VS Code installed, there probably will be nothing in the installed uh, section here. Uh, we have a search bar that says search extensions. So we're going to go ahead and search for a couple extensions that we want to install. So the first one is called auto rename tag. And it's usually the first one here. So auto rename tag by this, this guy here with 4.9 uh, million installs. Go ahead and install this. Some of these extensions might not seem that helpful to you right now because you might not have that much coding experience, but as you gain coding experience, you'll see quickly why these specific extensions are very helpful. Um, now the auto rename tag extension simply just changes the uh, opening 
uh, tag and a closing tag on an HTML element. And if you change the opening tag here, so we have tag, if I change this to tab, then the closing uh, tag here would also automatically change. So again, it might not seem that big of a deal, but when you're working with a lot of different HTML tags and you are making large edits, this auto rename tag extension can be very helpful. So the next extension we're gonna install is called Live Server. So go ahead and search for Live Server. And it's this one here uh, with 10.7 million downloads. And what this Live Server allows you to do is it allows you to run a local server. So when you change your code, you won't have to refresh the browser to see the updates. You'll see an update automatically. Normally, if you're working with a HTML file, you'll have that HTML file opened in a browser, and every time you make a change to that file, you'll have to refresh the browser. But with Live Server, you don't have to do that. It will automatically update for you. So go ahead and click on Install. And then it says this extension is enabled globally, which means that we do have the extension installed. So the next extension is going to be called Bracket Pair Colorizer. If I just type in that, it should pop up. So it's this one here, uh, Bracket Pair Colorizer. And all it does is change the color of the brackets. And it depends if it's a nested piece of code or an outer piece of code. So you can see here in the example, we have these purple brackets on the outer code. And then in the inner code here, where we got the if statement, we got the, the blue brackets. And this just helps you keep track of what piece, pieces of code is what. I mean, uh, when you have a lot of nested code, you could have like four or five different nested brackets, and it can be confusing if they're all the same color. So highly recommend bracket pair colorizer. Just click on install. The next uh, extension is called material icon theme. What material icon theme is, is, it just gives you a little icon depending on what the file is. So for example, if you have a JavaScript file, you'll see this icon next to the file name, uh, as well as Java. If you have a Java file, you'll see this icon next to the Java file. And it just kind of gives your uh, VS Code uh, a nicer look and it helps you search for specific types of files. You know, if you don't want to search for the file, I can actually just glance over and be like, oh, this is a JavaScript file versus just uh, looking over and trying to figure out what the extension is. So go ahead and click on install. So the last extension we're going to install is called JavaScript Code Snippets. So JavaScript Code Snippets is a really helpful extension. This allows you to type a few letters and then you, you can output uh, a piece of JavaScript code. This will save you a lot of time when you're writing the same piece of code multiple times. If we scroll down here, you can kind of see an example. Um, you know, if you type an FRE, it will uh, produce an array dot for each loop. Uh, if you type in CCL, you'll type in or it will type in for you console.clear okay so there are a lot of different shortcuts that you uh, can you can get with this uh, javascript code snippet extension so just go ahead and click on install and it will say this extension is enabled globally we have it installed so the last thing we're going to go over in this video is a few features in vs code and to do this we're going to create a small project so in VS Code, to create a project, what you want to do is just open up a folder. So I'm going to click on Open Folder. And if you don't have a folder that you want to create, you can click on New Folder here. But I have a folder already made called VS Code-Demo. So I'm going to open up that folder. Now, there are no files in this folder here. If there were, you would see it under where it says VS Code-Demo. I'm going to close out of the welcome screen. But we're going to go ahead and create a new file with this little icon here at the plus click on new file and then we're going to name this demo dot uh actually we'll call it index dot html okay so we're going to create an html file press enter and then we have that file created now for those of you who um are pretty new to coding some of this code i'm going to, about to type you probably don't know what it means yet uh, but just follow along anyway. Uh, once you do get a little bit of coding experience, this will all make sense. So in index.html, uh, normally an HTML file will have a basic HTML setup. Uh, there's certain 
tags that you need in a basic HTML file. Uh, but what's nice about VS Code is that it actually can produce that code for you just by typing in an explanation point. Now, if you type in an explanation point, uh, this feature here is called Emmet which will actually produce the code for you. So I typed an explanation point and we have this little autocomplete here. If you click on this first one here, boom, it actually will produce an HTML template for you, uh, which can save you a lot of time because typing in all of this, I mean, it's just, it's just a waste of time. So just type in the explanation point, click enter, bam, you have a HTML template ready to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file actually called demo.js. All right, and this is just a JavaScript file, and I'm going to show you a couple other shortcuts as well. Uh, the next feature is called IntelliSense, which basically predicts what you're about to type. So if I were to type in, uh, let's say I want a console.log, so if I type in con, just by typing con, it actually, you can see here, it's thinking ahead of me. So console. All right, I just typed in .l and boom, there it is, .log. So you see, uh, it's kind of helpful because VS Code will pretty much predict what you're about to type. So overall, those are some of the basic features in VS Code. There are a lot of other features that um, I simply did not go over this video just because it would take all day. That's how many features there are in VS Code. Uh, if you want to learn more about VS Code in specific items, you can actually just go to the back to the website code.visualstudio.com and then click on their docs. And then from there, uh, you can go through their getting started guide and just a bunch of other information that I simply just don't have enough time to go over in one video. Um, so this will be kind of like your best friend when it comes to your Visual Studio Code uh, number one resource. So if you have any questions about VS Code, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.